Okay, so let us continue our discussion. So, what we have uh, studied in our previous lectures in this uh, week is that if we have a system which is excited by uh, impulse, then we derive the expression for impulse response function that is h of t that the expression is 1 by m omega d e to the power minus eta omega n t sin omega d t. So, that is what we call impulse response function and then using impulse response function we derived the response of a system due to any arbitrary loading and this expression is h t minus tau f tau and then d tau. This is what we call Duhamel's integral. Now, the question is we have this forcing function, this is the forcing function and we can represent this forcing function in different form. It can be purely arbitrary. Now, just imagine there are certain functions say x of t which is periodic. What does it mean? x t is equal to x t plus minus n times t. Here capital T is the time period. Now, just imagine if we have a sinusoidal function. So, x of t is equal to cos of or sin of lambda t. This function we know it repeats. So, we can actually write x of t is equal to sin lambda t and then we know in this case period is 2 pi. So, sin lambda t plus 2 pi obviously minus will also hold. Now, this is a periodic function and then if we have function like this and of course, uh, there are other conditions uh, if a function satisfies then we can actually represent a function x of t into what we call Fourier series. Now, what is that Fourier series? n equal to 0 to infinity a n cos 2 pi n by t times t plus b n sin 2 pi n divided by t times t. So, this is what we call Fourier series. Now, of course, in this format we represent this function x of t, it must satisfy certain criteria. I am not going into those details because this course is not on Fourier series and Fourier transform, but we need these mathematical tools for our dynamic analysis. So, for the time being, if we have this function x of t, we can represent that in this Fourier series format. What is so special about it? If you look at the right hand side, then you can easily sense. We started with a function x of t, but now on the right hand side we have a cosine function and a sine function. The advantage is that for these two functions we already have derived the closed form expression. So, if I want to find out what is the response due to a say forcing function. So, in place of x I have say f of t that is the forcing function and if I can represent that in terms of Fourier series where we have only this sin and cosine terms, then obviously we know the solutions our only task is to find out these constants. 
A n and B n. So, what is uh, A n? Actually, this series we can write in a slightly different format A 0 by 2 plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity A n cos, I am not writing this bracketed term plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity B n sin of this bracketed term. Obviously, uh, our task is to find out what is A 0, A 0 is nothing but 1 by capital T minus T by 2 to plus T by 2 x of t dt. And then what is a n? a n is equal to 2 by capital T, then minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 and we have x of t cos of 2 pi n divided by t times t dt. Similarly, we can also find out B n which is equal to again 2 by t minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 x of t. Now, this time it will be sin 2 pi n by t t dt. Now, if you look at these expressions, we started with this function x of t and then the moment we know this function, we can find out a naught, a n and b n. The moment we evaluate all these constants a naught, a n and b n, then we can represent this function in terms of Fourier series where we have only sin cosine terms. As we progress, we will see what is the advantage, but for the time being, uh, of course, we can uh, use Fourier series to represent the force that we apply on a dynamical system. Now, again I uh, just uh, refresh you that not every function you can write in terms of Fourier series, there are certain conditions. So, you please uh, go through uh, separately with those uh, requirements for Fourier series, uh, but for the time being we have this expression x of t is equal to a 0 by 2 plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos 2 pi n t times t plus we can write b n sin 2 pi n t divided by capital T. Now, obviously, we know exponential of i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. Now, if you use this expression, then you can further simplify this uh, x of t. So, what you will get x of t in this case, if you use this relation will be n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity and then you have alpha n exponential of i 2 pi n divided by capital T times t. So, that is again the same Fourier series. Now, what is alpha n? Alpha n is uh, your 1 by t then minus t by 2 to plus t by 2. We have x of t times exponential i 2 pi n divided by t times. So, we can find out what is alpha n and you can show that this is nothing but a n uh, minus i b n by 2. And we also have in this format a n is equal to a minus n and b n is equal to b of minus n. So, that is the expression for Fourier series. The takeaway point is again I repeat 
if we have a forcing function recall we have m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f of t. Now, if I can represent this forcing function in terms of its Fourier series, then straight away I can find out the solution of x of t for this system. Because on the right hand side I have the cosine and sine functions. The only task is we have to find out this alpha n for this forcing function f of t or we can also find out a n b n whichever way we want then we can evaluate these coefficients and then find out the total solution. Now, the question is if we move further what we can establish is that if we have x of t is equal to n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity we have alpha n then exponential i 2 pi n divided by t times t. So, that is the Fourier series expression. Now, what we can do? We can slightly modify this expression. So, we have n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity and then in place of alpha n we can write 1 by capital T and then minus T by 2 to plus T by 2 and then we have the function x of say s and then exponential we have minus i 2 pi n by t times t. Actually in place of t let us introduce a new variable ds because we have t on the left hand side and then multiply this by the exponential function exp 2 pi n by t times t i. Okay. So, now from this expression what we can um, rewrite if we just notice that t what is t? t is equal to time period right. So, this is time and we know t is equal to 1 by say f naught that is the frequency this f naught frequency in hertz right. Now, if we modify that, so what we have n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. So, we have 1 by t in place of that we can uh, introduce uh, this uh, f that we will do in a minute. So, minus t by 2 to plus t by 2, then we have x of s exponential within bracket then I have minus i 2 pi then if this is the definition what is f n? f n is equal to n by capital T right. So, n by capital T I can replace with f n times s d s and then I have this part. So, you will have exponential i 2 pi then again f n t right. Okay. So, now uh, what is f n? This is also you can write n times f naught right. See the same expression. So, we have f n here and f n there. Also, if we find out the difference between two consecutive frequency this is what this will be 1 by t and which is nothing but delta f because this is the difference between two consecutive frequencies say n and n plus 1 and the difference between this is actually 1 f which is equal to 1 by t and this is nothing but delta f. So, now if we further simplify this expression. 
So, we can do that. So, what we will get is uh, summation n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity and then uh, we have uh, 1 by t then minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 and then we have x of s exponential minus i 2 pi f n so that we can replace then exponential i 2 pi f naught n t d s. Now, mm, in place of this quantity, what we have? We have already derived this is nothing but delta f. And if you look at the expression inside, what is that? This is nothing but, so we can write summation n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. So, we have this quantity is nothing but the Fourier representation of the same signal. So, we have say fn times exponential of i 2 pi n f 0 t and then we have uh, delta f. So, obviously, if we look at the limiting sense when delta f tends to 0, what will be x of t? x of t will be equal to minus infinity. Obviously, this is integration. The summation will be replaced by this integration. So, we have this uh, integration minus infinity to plus infinity. We have x then f e to the power i 2 pi then f t and this is t f. So, that is what we call Fourier transform. So, we started with Fourier series and now we have Fourier transform. So, if we have x of t, then from that we can transform it to x of omega or f either way you can write and we have valid forward and backward transform. So, if you recall this is just to uh, remind you what is x of omega? This is minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e to the power minus i omega t dt that we call forward transform. And then we have small x of t which is equal to again minus infinity to plus infinity. We have x of omega e to the power i omega t d omega. This is called backward transform. Now, Why we uh, do this uh, forward and backward transform? We will see in a minute how we can actually use it and then uh, modify the governing equation of motion of a SDOP system. We will apply that in a minute. So, before that, let us quickly go through. Now, when we have a signal, say x of t, then from that signal, we can find out what is x of omega from this forward Fourier transform. 
then we can also convert x of omega back to x of t through this backward transform. Now, this type of integral transform, uh, it actually satisfies the energy requirement. That means, if we find out what is the energy in uh, time domain, so we have energy in this signal x of t time domain, it should be the same in the frequency domain. So, we can do that in a minute. So, let us quickly check. So, x square of t dt minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, that is equal to what we can write minus infinity to plus infinity x of t and then in place of 1 x of t, we can write minus infinity to plus infinity, we have x of omega to the power i omega t uh, d omega and then this is multiplied by dt. Now, normally you see, uh, just let me remind you uh, that you see uh, 1 by 2 pi factor that is actually to balance energy. Uh, if you have 1 by 2 pi in the forward transform, then obviously in the backward transform you will have nothing. So, normally if you put 1 by square root of 2 pi in both forward and backward, then you do not need to remember. That is what I prefer. Otherwise, you can do either way in the forward transform. If you apply factor of 1 by 2 pi, then in the backward transform you do not need to. But for the time being, uh, so if we have that factor, so let us put that factor here. Now, the moment we have that, then uh, the next step, what we can do, we can interchange. So, we have two integrals, one over t, another over omega over the same limit. Now, what we can do, we can change the integral. So, we take this x of omega out, then we have 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity and we have x of t e to the power i omega t. So, we change the integral. So, we take d t inside. So, what we have here is uh, d omega. Now, what is this quantity? Obviously, uh, you can sense uh, we have x of t multiplied by e to the power i omega t instead of minus. So, it will be uh, the forward transform, but the complex conjugate of this quantity. Uh, so, that means minus infinity to plus infinity, we have x of omega and in place of this, we can write x star of omega d omega. So, this is nothing but minus infinity to plus infinity mod of x of omega square and then d omega. So, what we see here is that uh, energy in um, both time and frequency domain, they are same. This is what we call Parseval's identity, right? Parseval's So, Percival's theorem tells that we have the same energy in time and frequency domain, but here we use the Fourier transform relation. Now, the question is why we do that? Let us see how we can uh, use this relation. So, what we now have x of t is equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. We have x of omega e to the power i omega t d omega. Similarly, x of omega is equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e to the power minus i omega t d t. So, with that background, brief background obviously, uh, I will suggest all of you go through the theories of Fourier series and Fourier transform because in dynamical system, it is a really helpful tool as we progress, we will see in a minute. So, what we have 
you see mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f of t. Right. So, that is the dynamic equilibrium equation. So, this is obviously this is dynamic. Now, if we multiply both side of this equation by a to the power minus i omega t. So, on the left hand side what we have f of t a to the power minus i omega t and then integrate this function over minus infinity to plus infinity dt. Right? Then obviously on the left hand side we have mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx times a to the power minus i omega t dt. I repeat once more what we have done is that we take the Fourier transform of this dynamic equilibrium equation. So, we multiply both side by a to the power minus i omega t and integrate that function over minus infinity to plus infinity. Obviously, uh, you can have 1 by square root of 2 pi on either side for the time being I am not uh, worried of that because um, that is very simple you can consider and you can neglect also. So, if I open the bracket what we have uh, inside, so 1 by square root of 2 pi what we have minus infinity to plus infinity. This m is constant, so it will come out of integration. So, we have inside x double dot of t e to the power minus i omega t dt that is the first term plus c because c is a constant it will come out of the integration. So, we have within uh, the integral limits we have x dot of t then e to the power minus i omega t dt. And the final term is k times minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e to the power minus i omega t dt. And on the right hand side we have 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity f of t e to the power minus i omega t dt. Now, from this expression what we can easily tell that if we open this third bracket and take this 1 by square root of 2 pi. So, what will happen? Uh, we can tell that the third term on the left hand side is k times what is this quantity 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of t to the power i omega t dt. So, this is nothing but the Fourier transform of x of t that is x of omega. I am yet to decide what should be the first two terms. So, similarly on the right hand side what we can say is that on the right hand side what we have is uh, the Fourier transform of this forcing function and that is f of omega. Okay. So, I will write these two terms in a minute, but before I do that, so let us quickly see what we have is if we have x dot of t e to the power minus i omega t dt minus infinity to plus infinity, then you can show that this is nothing but we have i omega then integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e to the power minus i omega t dt. Similarly, we have another term x double dot of t e to the power minus i omega t dt minus infinity to plus infinity. This will be equal to i omega whole square minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e to the power minus i omega t dt. So, these two 
very important relation I just give it as a home task you try it yourself if you can't then obviously I will help you out but for the time being we can use this relation. So uh, in place of this double dot what we have i omega whole square times this quantity is what you see this integral term in the first and second expression that is x of omega right. So this relation if we use so what we have m times i omega whole square then x of omega that is the first term plus c times i omega then x of omega right and whatever remaining we have already derived that. Obviously what we get is we can have this term m times i omega square. So i square is minus 1 so minus m omega square plus i c omega plus k times x of omega is equal to f of omega. And then we can further simplify what is x of omega? x of omega is nothing but 1 by k minus m omega square plus i c omega times f of omega. Right. Now if you look at this expression on the left hand side I have x of omega that is the response of the system we started with. So this is the system we started with. We derive the expression for the response but obviously this response is in Fourier domain because we have x of omega. Now this is uh, written in a symbolic form uh, x of omega is equal to h of omega times f of omega. So what is this expression? I write it once more x of omega is equal to h of omega times f of omega. What is this h? This is called frequency response function. What is the expression of h of omega? We have derived that it is nothing but 1 by k minus m omega square plus i c omega. So for every omega we can find out the value of h of omega and then obviously once we find out this h of omega we can find out what is the solution. Now what is the advantage of this expression? If you recall if I just write down the expression so we have the equation in time domain mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f of t. And what is the solution of this uh, system? x of t if you recall we have derived using Duhamel integral 0 to t h t minus tau then f tau d tau. So if you want to find out the response in time domain for any arbitrary uh, loading function then what you have to do you have to perform this Duhamel integral that means for every t you have to find out this integral and that will give you the solution in time domain x of t. Now compared to that in the frequency domain what we have we have the Fourier representation of the forcing function f of omega. The moment we find out the Fourier representation of the forcing function f of omega that we multiply with the function h of omega and then immediately we get the solution x of omega. So the solution which was in time domain a Duhamel integral a convolution integral in this frequency domain we just multiply h of omega with f of omega and we immediately get the solution. Of course uh, there is a specific requirement for initial conditions I just uh, again uh, 
draw your attention just uh, look at that we have to have a certain initial conditions that I leave it as a exercise just think of it then we can discuss that point in our open session. But for the time being if we look at the system in time domain this integral is actually in Fourier domain is given by this simple expression. Obviously, what we have is uh, this h of omega and for this h of omega we have this uh, expression for h of omega. So, the moment we define mass, stiffness and damping, these are the three parameter that defines a system. We can easily find out what is the frequency response function h of omega for that system. And then if we have a forcing function, we can find out what is f of omega and then immediately we can find out x of omega and from that if we take inverse Fourier transform, so this will be square root of 2 pi 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity x of omega e to the power uh, i omega t d omega and we immediately get the response in time to. Now, what we see uh, in this actually the time domain solution and frequency domain solution and we have also identified what is the advantage of frequency domain solution. Obviously, as I said there is a special requirement just think about initial conditions and I leave this as a exercise just think of the initial conditions. Uh, we actually uh, have this uh, for 0, 0 initial conditions, but what will happen if you have non-zero that I leave it uh, for you to think we can discuss further as we progress. Now, the question is uh, if we have the system where the Duhamel integral uh, is uh, given by the expression x of t is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity h t minus tau f tau d tau. Then if we use the Fourier transform can we uh, derive the same uh, equation as we get from the Fourier definition. In the Fourier definition what we have x of t is equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. We have x of omega e to the power i omega t d omega right. So, let us see whether we get back this relation from this Duhamel integral. So, we start with Duhamel's integral. Now, what we can do in this expression we have minus infinity to plus infinity h t minus tau and in place of f tau we can write down 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. We have f of omega e to the power i omega here we have tau. So, this will be tau over omega and then finally, we have d tau. 
So, that is the representation of the function f tau. We use the definition of Fourier transform. So, it is f tau we get it from the f of omega. So, we use backward transformation. Now, what we can do? We can take this uh, constant out and then change the integration order. So, we take f of omega and within bracket we have minus infinity to plus infinity. We take this h t minus tau inside multiplied by e to the power i omega tau and then we take d tau inside and then finally, we have d omega. Right. Okay. So, now what we do? We use the transformation t minus tau is equal to say u. So, what we have d tau is equal to what? Minus d u. Now, if you use that transformation, what we have 1 by square root of t pi minus infinity to plus infinity f of omega, then here within bracket we have if we put minus infinity here in place of tau, you will see it will be plus infinity then 2 minus infinity then h t minus tau. So, this will be h u then e to the power i omega in place of tau. So, tau will be t minus u. So, we have t minus u and then uh, in place of d tau we have minus d u and then finally, d of omega. Obviously, uh, we can change this order of integral. So, it will be minus 2 plus and then further simplification will give us 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity f of omega. Then we have minus infinity to plus infinity h of u e to the power minus i omega u du times we have e to the power i omega t and then t omega. Now, what is this quantity? This is nothing but the expression that we have derived for frequency response function. So, what we have 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. We have f of omega times h of omega. So, we can write that as x of omega times e to the power i omega t d of omega. And you see we derived the relation between x t and x of omega. So, what is the takeaway point? We have h of omega is equal to what? Minus infinity to plus infinity h t e to the power minus i omega t d t. So, this is the relation between the frequency response function and the impulse response function. So, on the right hand side we have impulse response function small h of t, on the left hand side we have frequency response function capital H of omega. Now, this lecture tells you actually how to find out the solution in time domain obviously, we have Duhamel integral and then uh, what is the relation between Duhamel integral in uh, time domain and when you convert that into frequency domain what is the expression and we have noticed that 
the integral form in time domain we get a product form in the frequency domain where we have a important uh, function called frequency response function based on the parameters of the system. So, m c k the moment we define these are the parameters of a system then we can immediately plot this function h of omega. So, in the next class we will obviously plot that function and then we will solve also some example how we can use this to find out the response of a system that we will see in the next class. But for the time being the most important derivation is that frequency response function for our system when we define m c k values. We get the frequency response function and the moment we get frequency response function we can immediately find out the solution x of omega and that we can easily convert again back to time domain. And that is the advantage because uh, if we have a time signal we can take the Fourier transform of that very easily. The moment we find out Fourier transform solution of the dynamical system is very easy. As we progress we will see that uh, in the next class we will plot this function and we will also see how we can derive the response of a system. But remember uh, that initial conditions I again uh, uh, draw your attention to just focus on the initial conditions. You will see we have used 0, 0 initial conditions otherwise uh, this uh, derivation will slightly change. Um, all these are for 0, 0 initial conditions and for that at least we can find out the solution very easily and we can avoid the convolution integral that we have in time domain. So, with that let us close here. We will continue on this topic and we will see how this frequency response function looks like and again we will also revisit the relation between this frequency response function and impulse response function. With that let us close here. Thank you very much. Thank you.